Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Serious Sunday. I'm Luke. And I'm John. And we're talking about uh, free-to-play again this week. Uh, I know that we kind of left off last week just talking a little bit about sort of the basic history there, but we didn't really get, didn't get into the meat of the conversation, so thought we'd come back and uh, talk a little bit more about it this yeah, week. Yeah, actually talk about free-to-play, like the how it applies to the system games, maybe. Yeah, what it is now, and you know what they, uh, what people do, and and what exactly is a free to play game, and what is a pay to win game, and is pay to win even a thing? That sort of thing. Well, I mean, <laughs> yes, <laughs> it is. Well, I mean, it does exist, um, but it is sort of a fringe case uh, as far as uh, as far as I have experienced. So, just to explain where we're coming from with pay to win, free to play. So, we talked about it last time. Blah 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 blah. Free to play though is. Uh, it's a multiplayer game, generally, uh, that has microtransactions in it. So it asks you to pay small amounts of money for bits and pieces of content rather than just pay for a box fee. So now that we've got that out of the way, <laughs> uh, Pay to Win is an example of that where the items that are being sold are crucial or give the player some sort of advantage over non-playing characters. Uh, yeah. well, some sort of statistical advantage, I should say. Non-paying characters, you mean? Yes. What did I say? Non- non-playing. Oh well, that's <laughs> that's not that's not correct at all. Well, you you can't win if you don't play, so you weren't wrong there either. Wow, the lotto. It's good. It's good. <laughs> We've come a long way, kid. That's great. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah. So I mean, there are definitely games that do give other players sort of a competitive advantage that are not otherwise attainable by players, and I think that that's really the major distinction here. Yeah, the players uh, in in the North American market, players really do want to be uh, they want to be able to a they want to be able to earn everything in game for free uh, yes. that is available in the store. Or everything at least the that to that do so. is that has a bearing on the game itself. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, of course, you want that to be sort of limited. A lot of people will say limited just to, uh, a, like, aesthetic items, so, like, clothing options and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I don't necessarily agree it has to be ra- that restricted. No, uh, no, I don't, I don't agree either, but, you know, as, as sp- stated in our last video, uh, we are people who work in the free-to-play, free-to-play game yeah. space, so, uh, you know, it's... It, it has sort of makes sense to us. We've reconciled the whole idea of free to play with ourselves. So, take take that with a grain of salt. If if that gives us less credence to you, then I don't know what to say. Yeah, I don't think I don't. I mean, it's it's weird that we even feel like we have to give that disclaimer because it's it, it makes it seem like there's something dirty going on, and there really isn't. Um, no, no. Well, I'm least. sorry. Dirty beyond has what has always been going on, which is the developers of games employing certain psychological tactics to uh, you know elicit money from their players <laughs> that's if, if you consider that dirty I guess yeah yeah but I mean that's been what I'm saying is that's that's been happening since the arcades right it's there's no well difference. yeah since the beginning of time and actually arcades are a great example and I'd like to talk about that at some point during the video today but uh, we'll get back to that. Yeah, it's it's it's. Uh, they, I mean, that's basically what I'm saying. Maybe now is a good time to to talk about that because it's... well, sure. I mean, that's where that's where it's all coming from, right? It's it's we we kind of went on a cycle from we pay in microtransactions for our games, which was the the arcade experience, and then we went through a period of time where we were just used to putting a, a flat price on things, and that was sort of the more of the console uh, pre-internet or early internet. Days. It was the, it was the home gaming setup. Yeah, that, that and home gaming pre-internet. Or right. Pre, well, pre, sorry, I mean, no, exactly not pre-internet. It, right? Pre-high speed internet. Well, we started. I mean, yeah, you started with coin app machines, basically, right? Where you put in a quarter or uh, I don't know if it was. I mean, I'm, I'm sure that they started like five cents and so on uh, back when it was like Pac-Man or whatever. I don't honestly know. Let's just start. Like, with, let's talk about quarters. Quarters. Yeah, let's just say currency. quarters because it's it's what everybody kind of recognizes and it's kind of where it ended, right? Um, so you would drop a quarter into a machine and then that machine would give you a life or a chance to play the game until you lost until you 
you died. And then you could put in another quarter to continue playing if you did lose. And that's kind of the way that it, that it sort of originally played. You would, you would get credit to continue playing the game. That's how it worked when we played, uh, actually we played on our Let's Play series, uh, Shadows Over Mistara, which was right, a, yeah, originally a co-op a good game. Good example of this, actually. Yes, um, and so every time you died, actually, if you paid close enough attention to the screen, you would actually notice the little coin would float around in the sky when uh, one of us uh, continued playing the game. And that was to say, you just spent a credit. And in some modes of that version, it actually gives you a cap on the number of credits that you can use. I think the new Gauntlet game does that as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's there's certainly a retro flair that, that looks back to that as well uh, that's happening right now, but... I mean, at the time, you got to remember, that's how anyone got paid for these machines, and you had to, when it came to arcades, I mean, you had a couple of different people that had to get paid along the way. It wasn't just the arcade owner, it was the arcade owner who then paid a fee to probably whatever company was running it, who then paid a fee to whoever else. Um, yeah, well, I, I I believe that they mostly bought the machine itself and the hardware to run, the, the sort of boards to run the game and so on. Helpful? Okay. Um, well, there there were bought um, arcade bo- uh, arcade cabinets, and then there were leased arcade cabinets. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Um, leased ones were probably quite a bit cheaper because, like, a percentage of the profits probably went back to the lesser. But um, in the case of like bought arcade cabinets, then you would just own the boards, and you were free to dick around with them as you liked within certain certain you know with certain um, levels. Um, but uh, yeah, for the most part, that was that was just it, and you got to keep however many quarters, and uh, hopefully you had enough people playing this game that you could that you could break even on the cost of the board that you bought. So, <clears throat> the interesting thing to note about this is you want to talk about play, pay to win. <laughs> mm-hmm. Arcade games. It wasn't just that. Oh, when you die, you have to pay another quarter. These games were designed to take your money. Yeah. Like, oh like, no. Make they, no mistake, the games were... dying, dying in these games was something you did, and you did a lot. They were and unfair on purpose. Exactly. Uh, which, which <laughs> is kind of the to me, that's like the the pinnacle of, uh, you know, pay to win. Well, I, uh, I mean, or at and least that's the what quote unquote dirty tactics. Was. You know, it would be the the dirtiest that ever got. And the best at the, the best people at playing the game would still have a chance to win, and maybe that's one of the reasons why a lot of people sort of consider it less of an issue because the level the playing field was still level because everybody had to pay a quarter. I suppose that's true. That's the one. I think that's the one sort of defining characteristic of the arcade machine that a lot of people don't find as quote unquote slimy or whatever as the whole pre free to play. Um, uh, sort of methodology because everybody paid. It was still a premium product. It's just that premium was very low, and you would pay again to play after you got that one life. And maybe that maybe that's the real distinction. Like there was always an, a level of entry fee, sort of thing. Yeah, um, and and the theory behind it because we did say we were going to talk a little bit behind the theory. Uh, the theory behind like modern free to play in terms of. Uh, in terms of just how that's all put together and, and why it's used as a business model. It's not that everybody is getting to play the game for free. How are these people ever making any money? Right, no, not in the least. Um, <clears throat> it's, it, is to, it is actually to uh, a, a studios or a, whoever's running the game. It's to their advantage uh, to have as many people playing the game, e- even for free, as is humanly possible. It all works yeah. on the idea of a percentage, a very, very small percentage of the players spending... A very large amount of the money, just to yes, sort of explain the concept as it ex- as it exists today as a business proposition. Yeah, my last understanding of those numbers is it was about two point two percent of all players uh, actually monetize when playing a free to play game. Which means if you don't monetize and uh, ninety eight more people that you know don't monetize, you're not necessarily still out of the uh, out of the ordinary. There's just going to be a couple of people who are going to eventually say, "Well, I like this game, and this is only a buck fifty, so I guess I'll buy it." And that's how it begins. 
No, sometimes <laughs> well, that's where it begins, and sometimes that's where, you know, and, and it ends there as well. But yes, you know, you get the people that <clears throat> want to be number one on the leaderboards. They want to be as powerful as they can, as quickly as they can. Um, you know, they don't. Maybe they just don't want to deal with the what what they would call the grind of the game, which I would call the actual game. Um, but there's any number of reasons why people would spend huge amounts of money in these games. But the reason that sounds like such a weird thing to everybody that plays them, or the the general public, is because to them, like you were saying, they're playing for free, their friends are playing for free, no one they know has ever paid. And by the way, yes, somebody that you know has paid for those games, they're just not telling you. Oh, almost you. definitely. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's how these games make their money. So then there became a common perception that... Anytime you did a free-to-play game, uh, that you would then, of course, charge money for items that would give these players a huge advantage over other players. Right, and the thought was that the people who monetize are the people who are leading the top of the game. And it's not necessarily a fallacy. I mean, um, especially in things like games that have a time gate like Clash of Clans and the other builders. Um, yeah, a lot these of the people common, have, common mobile tactic, yeah. Not tactic, yeah, these people have strategy, spent money so that they don't have to spend nearly as much time to get to uh, sort of the end game. Um, I, you know, uh, I think that that's, uh, you know, a lot of people sort of dislike that because it just means that you've artificially gotten to the end of the game. But that said, I mean, this is, well, one of the reasons why that, that has been sort of an accepted, um, method of free to play is that that allows people to, who don't necessarily have that much time to get to the end of the game to sort of skip the amount of time that it takes to do things. And there are always going to be people who are going to be detractors of that whole idea. But at the end of the day, it's basically saying, well, here's something that you could do if you have the time and energy to devote to it, or you can get there and skip some of the grind. Yeah, and and that's... Uh, see, I've never really liked the term the grind anyway, and that's a whole other podcast in and unto itself. Sure. Uh, I'm one of those people that's more or less out of the belief that, you know, if you're making a game and the quote-unquote grind is a grind, you've, you've failed along the way. If you make something, you know, especially in MMOs, if you make people grind for, you know, six months before you get to the end game, the fun part, you've mm-hmm. failed. You've failed at your job. Go home, sir. <laughs> no win for you. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, I'm, I'm using the term grind more colloquially than that. I know, it's I know, just, but it's yeah. like I said, it's a soft point. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And yeah, that that is also actually, to be honest, another thing that's worth sort of mentioning is that uh, modern game design, most games that are in the current market are purposely avoiding anything that's overly grindy because we know, we game designers, are fully aware that people don't like doing repetitive tasks. Um, or if they are doing a repetitive task, it should have some sort of a reward structure and people should still enjoy doing that repetitive task. Um, so games that make you go out and spend an hour searching for and farming 30 rats in, you know, this vast underground complex or something like that. And that being really the only thing that you do, we really don't do that anymore because there's no good reason to do that when there are other much better things that you could do. But, um, in the, in the previous case, when I did say the grind and it's not even really a grind, oddly enough is uh time gating, just sort of the weight of getting to the next thing, or well, yeah, it's, it's anything with, t- with that, right? It's time gating in a lot of these mobile games. It's yes. uh, <clears throat> it's either you know gate- directly gated content or uh, progression, that sort of thing. In in these other games, it's it's you know it covers a wide variety of things. Yeah, as opposed, to, it's not pay to win, but it's pay to progress faster. Yeah, and I'll I'll, I'll admit that. So if if part of the game to you is a race. Then I guess okay. Here, that's a good point. Then, if you think that you know you have to be the first person to be at the top, uh, but that's not how most people play, and of course, that's not how games are going to be designed because then only one person gets to have any fun. Yeah, and honestly, if you consider the numbers, uh, yeah, like ninety-seven point eight percent of players don't really feel that. Um, spending money to get further in the game faster is 
sort of worth their time, well, worth their money at the very least. Um, and that's perfectly valid. And like, as free to pay, free to play developers, we also recognize that and value people who just enjoy playing the game and want to be there to, well, to you, you're there to play the game and to enjoy it yourself. And that's what we want. We want your playing the game and enjoying it yourself to also be a incentive for other people to play the game with you. And that's yeah. what, that's, that's the value in, um, I believe the term that, uh, has most re- recently been given to these players is free marketers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, they're they're the free market. They're the people who go into the game and they play it, and they create this community for you. And they're there and they're helping your game to succeed because they're an active part of your community. Um, they're not spending any money on your game, but they're an extremely high a value to you because they make your game bigger. They make more people interested in your game and. There's always the possibility that they're going to tell a friend who might possibly be interested in monetizing. Yeah, and ultimately, I mean, that's that's a that's a whole again a topic for a whole other day is the way games are marketed now. Absolutely. But, <clears throat> you know, I mean, when it comes, to, I guess I guess the long and the short of it, because we're coming up, you know, past our, our allotted time here, and we're going into overtime <laughs> a little bit, but. Uh, you know what it really comes down to is the whole thing about pay to win. It, yes, it is a thing. No, it's not common. It's it's yeah. not a common thing, and it's generally done in games that don't make money. They don't do well. They don't have lasting power. It's not something that you can just a label that you can throw on a game from say, oh, I don't know, like Supercell. Mm, no, uh, like Clash of Clans is pay to progress. Definitely, yes. it is not pay to win because there are people that are top tier who have not monetized. Now, I mean, there are also people who are top tier who have literally spent thousands of dollars on these games. Um, but it's it's a mixed bag. Yeah, you put the work in, you put the time in, you get it for free. You don't want to do that, you can pay for it. That's long and the short. Exactly uh, so. <clears throat> but it's not nearly as big a problem as people want a lot of people would want us to believe that it is. Uh, it's just another way of making money, and it really does give us many more options for our gaming time, especially on mobile devices, uh, where we can, where we spend a lot of time, but very short periods of time playing games. Yeah. <clears throat> like five minutes at most, in many cases, of, you know, um, in the case of your average builder, logging in, collecting your resources, starting a new build task, maybe doing a fight, and then finishing. Yep. So, you know, it's it's really how much time do you have, how many sessions a day do you have time to put in, and are you willing to put that time in? Does the game make that enticing enough to you to not want to necessarily spend your money, but spend your time? Yeah, and are you engaged enough to come back and do that multiple times in a day? And that's what's more important to the developers than scamming you out of your five bucks. Right. <laughs> yeah, like, that's I mean... Just, that's just a reality. Yeah, and I mean, that's that's kind of a funny thing, and I think a lot of people have this weird perception of game developers who create uh, free-to-play content and thinking that, like, we really just kind of see the players as a paycheck and, like, somehow they seem to believe that people who are not playing are seen by the developers as these weird scrubs that do absolutely nothing for their game and all we really want is the whales, quote-unquote. That uh, that sort of ugly term that everybody uses, right? Um but uh, it couldn't be far from the truth. Like, at the end of the day, players want other players to enjoy their game, to get the most out of their game, and to play the game. Like, at the end of the day, knowing that somebody has played a game, played my game, or a game that I worked on, that's much more sort of rewarding to me than knowing that somebody has, like, dropped a couple of bucks on it. That's, uh, that's like, um, that's an honor to hear that somebody was willing to put a little bit of money into my game. But uh, at the same time, like, if I see a million people have played my game, that's a big number to me. That's what's important to me as a game developer, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Anyway, uh, <clears throat> you know, we've touched a little bit on free-to-play now in a couple of different ways. We could talk a lot more about it, and in a much more structured way, if you'd like. And if you would like to hear anything about any specific aspects of it, we are more than happy to talk about it. You just need to leave us a comment here in the uh, the old YouTubing thing. Yep. Yeah, drop us a comment and tell us what uh, you'd like to hear about the free-to-play market, because even if we're not, like, industry lead gurus on free-to-play, we have uh, we have thoughts and we've done, th- we've done the research. So we can probably tell you a couple of things if you're interested in hearing about them. But We might not be experts, but we can pretend to be. Well, we're not top in our field, certainly. <laughs> yeah. But we're up there. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't work at Supercell. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> we'll see yeah. you next time, guys. Thanks for Have joining us. Have a good one, us. guys. Thank you very much. Take care.